Twilight Zone to Star Trek Hardware, software, take a seat if you dare Power up, download, database, break the code, CD-ROM, super slick, point and click Take the spin, now you're in really techno, hip all because of a computer chip What's going on guys? It's K-Dub here with another episode of Crypto Zombie. So today is Friday, that's right, it's the weekend, we made it, congratulations Welcome back to the channel. Having a look at what is going on today, Bitcoin is up 1.31%. It has certainly been a wild ride for Bitcoin this week. The past 48 hours have been absolutely nuts. We dumped all the way down to about 9,477, pumped back up to 10,439, dumped all the way back down to $9,734, and currently we find ourselves at 10,148. Definitely been really, really crazy. If you stuck it out for this week and you're still hanging around in this crazy Bitcoin and cryptocurrency space, well, give yourself a pat on the back because it's certainly pretty wild out there. So today, what I want to talk about, though, is realistically speaking, was this a dead cat bounce? Was this a fake out? Why are the institutions accumulating in the background? Because we do have proof. I'll show you that today. We spoke about it briefly yesterday. I also want to talk about this bond bubble that's been going on. Okay, that's certainly been affecting Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies. And on top of that, I have two charts that I have never shown on this channel ever before. They are very interesting, and I think you're going to get a lot of value out of them because it's really going to help to put things into perspective. So that being said, if that sounds good to you, well, you know what to do. Also, if it is your first time checking out the Crypto Zombie channel and you're not subscribed yet, what are you waiting for? We do this every single day at this point. I would certainly say you're missing out. And as you guys know, every Monday is the Ledger Nano S giveaway. Now, Bitcoin dominance. 68.6%. So we're actually seeing Bitcoin dominance going back up again, even though the overall market cap is falling. Right here, we can see we do have some big gainers today. Bitcoin, Walton Chain, Japan Content, Verge, Basic Attention, 0x, Clippercoin, GX, Eker Real Estate, Tezos. So we are seeing some altcoins doing quite well today. That being said, the Fear and Greed Index is up a little bit today. We're now up to 31. However, we are still putting in somewhat fear, but... Like they say, you know, when there's fear, that's when you buy, right? Buy when there's blood in the streets, even if it's your own blood, right? That's what they say. So let's have a look. Let's actually see if that confirms on the charts over here. But before we hop into the news and the charts, guys, we have breaking news. Backed has officially been cleared to launch. It says our contracts have already received the green light from the CFTC through the self-certification process and user acceptance testing has begun. And with the approval by the New York State Department of Financial Services to create backed trust company, a qualified custodian, the backed warehouse will custody Bitcoin for physically delivered futures. This offers customers unprecedented regulatory clarity and security alongside a regulated, globally accessible exchange in a market underserved by institutional grade infrastructure. And when is it coming out? Well, they say we are excited about supporting the future of digital assets at back until our launch on September 23rd. We'll continue onboarding and testing with market participants. So that is the breaking news of the day. Let's have a look and see what Bitcoin's doing since then. Uh, okay, so Bitcoin's actually up a little bit. Well, everything else in this video definitely still pertains to what is going on, but that was definitely some news we needed to hear. Without further ado, back to the program. Well, currently, like we were saying, we were supported by the 100 moving average on the daily. We fell below the 50, and we also have the 200 exponential as sort of the safety net, but we didn't need it. Looks like we're being held up by the 100. However, you are noticing that overall volume, even though we have had some spikes recently, is declining. Now, the thing about declining volume is if we do continue sideways towards the end of this wedge, you could be looking for a massive breakout right around the beginning of September, right? We've been talking about that on this channel. It could, it could be a, a boring couple of weeks ahead. It's possible, right? However, we are currently teetering on this sort of danger zone. Now you can see right here, if we look at these two green lines all the way down, they show a descending channel. But right here was the last time we really 
touched it, and since then, Bitcoin has been following on this trend right here. So if we can stay above this, that's good because we'll be putting in higher lows, which is good short term, and we would be working our way towards the end of this triangle. Now, do keep in mind we have the VPVR very high amounts, around 11362 However, to be completely honest with you, I think it's going to play out a lot like the $6,400 level, where Bitcoin's not really going to have any problem breaking through that, as long as we do break out to the upside out of this giant wedge that we've been forming, okay? Just my opinion, but based on what we saw last time, I don't see why I would have trouble doing that again. Now, having a look at these key levels, you do notice that Bitcoin is out of this first danger zone, which is good. We had that level sitting at about... 10,100 and Bitcoin is sitting at around 10,149. So we're just barely hanging on, but currently we are technically out of the danger zone. Now, if we fall into this box, we may have to change our tune just a little bit. Currently, we are struggling to break into the EMA ribbon. You could see uh, we tried to touch it one, two times, but we just keep getting rejected. Obviously, once Bitcoin tends to break inside and then out of the ribbon, especially once we get above this major turning point, well, usually we tend to go a lot higher. So, yeah, keep our eyes on that, guys. I'd like to see us actually get back inside of the ribbon. But having a look here, this was that giant wedge that we were putting in. I kind of excluded this area right here. It was a little bit irrational. Most of the time, it was sort of just dancing on the actual previous resistance as support for a little bit until obviously we broke through. You know, the more we tend to hit, whether it be a resistance or a support, it does weaken it, right? So we fell through and you can see right here, we wicked down again and caught this bottom trend line. Now, obviously we are still being supported by the parabolic advance. We have two of them. You could look at the purple or the red line. Either of them seem to be playing out. You can see back here, we were actually sort of struggling between the two, couldn't figure out which side we wanted to be on. Now, having a look at market cipher, there was a good opportunity for a little bit of a mini long. We had those two green snake eyes put in, right? There was a small little uptick right here. However, we were hit once again with manipulation X's and red diamonds. So currently we are going to tread lightly, take it with a grain of salt. Having a look at the Bitcoin dominance, we are back up to 69.95%. We had dipped down to about 68.63. So you are seeing, even though altcoins had that little mini rally the other day, once again, a lot of those profits got sucked back into, you know, the good old buddy Bitcoin, right? But like I always say on the channel, the trend is your friend until the end. And we have just entered the green super guppy as of June. So currently I would say that we are on just the beginning. It's just the beginning of what I believe to be a very, very, very long journey to some extremely higher highs. Now I know, where am I getting this info from, right? Am I just pulling it out of my head? Well, let's just say this. Crypto Twitter is getting a little sleepy, according to Josh Rager, maybe even crypto YouTube, okay? He says, let's wake up. Give this a like if you think that Bitcoin hits a new all-time high, 20K or above, in the next six months. Otherwise, right below when you think Bitcoin price hits a new high. So I'm actually interested. Let's have some fun before we get into the charts. If you think that Bitcoin is going to hit a new all-time high, meaning above 20K within the next six months, give this video a like right now. If you think it's going to take a different amount of time, drop me a comment and let me know, or maybe you don't think we're going to ever get to 20K again, which if that's the case, why are you even watching this channel? Okay. But let me know below. But the one thing I do want to point out is talking about this bond bubble about to burst. We spoke about the inverted yield, yield curve yesterday. I do want to turn it over to Mark Yusko. Now he's the other half of Morgan Creek and he talks about Bitcoin. They were basically asking him what he thinks about it, given its current situation and the fact that now it's actually been falling since the trade tension got, I guess you could say, a little bit less tense. So this is basically what Mark had to say. I'm a little more nervous about how bad the global economy is. I mean, think about it. There are 15 economies around the world where the 30-year is below Fed funds in the U.S. So the global yield curve is very, very inverted. And that's usually not been a good sign historically. Mark, one quick last question. That is, you know, in recent weeks, a lot of people have been making a big thing about Bitcoin's run higher yeah. uh, and the correlation it seemed to have been having with global turmoil. Things have seemed to have gotten worse and Bitcoin also turned lower. So sh should we throw that narrative out the window or at least table it? Well, I, look, I, I've been saying for a long time that, you know, people who watch the daily price of Bitcoin are really missing the whole point, right? The whole idea of Bitcoin is, 
it's a store of value. It's a chaos hedge or schmuck insurance, as I like to call it. And what we need to think about is the long-term trend. Every year, the low is higher. The value of the network goes up. And so to worry about day-to-day -day valuations and prices really misses the major point, which is you want to own a piece of the network. You want to have one, two, three, five percent of your net worth in this asset as a hedge against all of the problems that we see in the fiat markets and in the equity markets. Look, equities are very overvalued. Bonds are overvalued. It's tough to find an asset that is undervalued. The only right. one I can really find is volatility. And it uh, has become less undervalued in the last couple of days. So as you can see, Mark Yusko says that people are essentially looking for this hedge. He does believe that Bitcoin is a store of value. And the one thing, the most important takeaway was basically when he said that Bitcoin has continued to put in higher lows. This is something we don't talk about a lot, right? If you actually have a look at this, everyone always likes to talk about Bitcoin highs, the all time highs, right? Well, basically on this chart, the green lines represent Bitcoin all-time highs. Now, I've excluded anything sort of before April of 2011, only because before that, it was basically just miners mining Bitcoin, and there really weren't a lot of good ways to measure the network and the activity on it. So I'm really just sort of starting from when we have good data, right? So you could see... Right back here, we hit our all-time high in June of 2011, and that was $32, and then Bitcoin fell all the way down to $2, okay? Now, keep in mind, over the course of the next, let's see how long it took, so basically from there all the way, now this took... 504 days until Bitcoin rallied up until its next all-time high, which, by the way, was a 14,000% increase up to $271, and that was around April 2013. Then Bitcoin had a subsequent pullback to $64, okay? So having a look at Bitcoin's run-up and then its subsequent pullbacks, you realize that Bitcoin never goes lower than the lows that it puts in in each bear market. You could see right here, up to 32, down to 2, up to 271, down to 64, up to 1,184, down to 164. And then the most recent pump, we had Bitcoin go all the way up to uh, 19,746, depending on which exchange you looked at, only to dump all the way down to 3,150, where everybody said 84% pullback. Bitcoin is a terrible store of value. How could you possibly put any of your money into this thing? This one time, Bitcoin went from six cents all the way to 36 cents, and then it crashed down to 21 cents. And then another time, Bitcoin went from 85 cents all the way to $29, and then it crashed to $3. And then another time, Bitcoin went all the way to $213, and then it crashed all the way to $70. And then another time, Bitcoin went all the way to $1,100 and then it crashed all the way to $239. So the moral of the story is don't buy Bitcoin because you know it's going to crash again. But keep in mind that Bitcoin never tends to go lower once it touches that low after the bear. So you're looking at 3,150 being the bottom. Bitcoin is not going lower than this, or if it, if it plans on doing it, it certainly hasn't done it in the past before. And also just to show you how unbelievably crazy it would be when Bitcoin say, uh, or when people say that Bitcoin is going to go, you know, all the way down to zero or something like that. Let me just actually, um, draw a shape right here. Why can't I find the tool for the, here we go. Geez, sorry guys. So, you know, if Bitcoin was to fall, you know, all the way down, you know, this line down here represents $2. I mean, you're looking at something crazy like this, guys. I mean, do you really think Bitcoin's going to do something like that? Okay. The other thing I wanted to point out is just talking about Bitcoin actually genuinely being the greatest store of value we've ever seen. Just have a look at this that is playing behind me right now. Now, this is data from DataLite, cryptocurrencies data analytics platform. And this shows you the ROI of Bitcoin versus the ROI of stocks dating back since August of 2017. I don't think we even have to play this thing all the way out. I think we all know who's going to be the clear winner at the end, right? 
Also, I wanted to just talk about this curve. We've never talked about this on the channel, and yes, this is on the logarithmic, so obviously, you know, the, um, what are you going to call it? The numbers obviously get, uh, they, they change, right, over time. The value distorts. I cannot think today. I'm sorry. It's Friday. <laughs> but you can see that having a look at this parabolic curve that we essentially started all the way back since 2010, Bitcoin has absolutely respected this nonstop during its entire existence. It has literally never fallen below it ever. Okay, so currently, if we have a look and we zoom in here and you think that Bitcoin does have to retest some of these levels, well, I don't think Bitcoin's gonna fall straight down. Nothing really falls straight down, right? We do have sort of sideways consolidation up and down movements. Even if Bitcoin was to come somewhere over here, you know, look at this. If we were to fall straight down, Bitcoin would still be $4,688, which I do not think we're gonna fall that low. I do think that, you know, we would have some sort of a thing where we'd sort of, you know, come out here or something. And if that's the case, then maybe we will hit some of these lower lows. Maybe we will retouch this line, you know, in the 7,000s, 8,000s, 9,000s. But I'll tell you what, this line has provided support since the beginning. So I would definitely say we're not going below that. So that's basically what I just wanted to point out. And also, you know, you're seeing these lately. I feel like it's been a little bit of a battle between gold and Bitcoin. Personally, I don't see why gold and Bitcoin need to be battling each other. I think they're both good for their own individual needs. Personally, I am more of a fan of Bitcoin, clearly, but I'm not here, you know, dissing gold, right? But you do have Anthony Pompliano saying Bitcoin's price could fall 50% from today's price of $10,600 and the currency would still be outperforming the S&P in 2019. Peter Schiff, the gold bug, says yes, when Bitcoin is only down 50%, that will be true. But the problem for Bitcoin hodlers is that the decline will be much greater than 50%. To which Pomp replies, dear Peter, the next 50% drawdown will be after Bitcoin has appreciated hundreds of percent from here. Remember, it's already up 200% this year. I heard gold had a big day recently though, move 2%. Congratulations. So these guys are going at it. These guys are going at it. Definitely still got to get pomp on the channel. Got to reach out to that guy, hit him up on Twitter, tell him that I'm interested. But also, you know, when it comes down to these people, um, you know, saying things like, you know, about gold, store of value, Bitcoin is worthless, yada, yada, yada. I just want to take a quick trip down memory lane. I'm not going to play this whole video, although it is a good video. And this was basically uh, CNBC's coverage when Bitcoin had hit $100 for the first time. And I just want to show you sort of the way that it was looked at back then, okay? And this is not talking about just like how it's, you know, used for drugs and illegal purposes. I mean, just from the, you know, economic standpoint. So just watch this clip really quick. First, I have to give Bitcoin creators uh, credit. At least they tr they know enough not to trust fiat money that's controlled by our government. But yeah. we they're trying to reinvent the wheel, and they've come up with a flat tire. We already have a perfect real form of money, and it's called gold. Money has to have f uh, four elements. It has to be very rare, indestructible, divisible without losing its purchasing power, and cannot be increased by fiat. And, and, and Bitcoins fail on the first two. They are not rare, and they are very much destructible. Okay, well, number one, uh, misinformed. Bitcoin is rare. There's only 21 million ever in existence, 4 million estimated to be lost forever, and they are not very easily destructible. In fact, I can't think of a situation in which Bitcoin was actually destroyed. I could think of situations in which it was forked. I could think of situations in which the network tried to have a 51% attack, but I can't ever think of a situation in which Bitcoin was actually ever destroyed. And once again, I just wanted to point out that this is a lot of the information, uh, misinformation, I should say, that tends to get spread out, you know, in the universe, out to out to the, the masses, right? Also, just going to throw it out there, since this video was made, Bitcoin's actually uh, 100x'd. So yeah, hope you, uh, hope you bought some there, buddy. But what I wanted to talk about, sort of reiterating on yesterday's fact, is that yes, people are still buying, and yes, institutions are seeing inflows. According to Brian Armstrong, he's the CEO of Coinbase, they say that the global market valued at $8 billion, institutional customers have been depositing around $200 million to $400 million per week into the crypto market, and in just the past 12 months, as seen in the steep increase in the inflow of institutional capital into cryptocurrency investment firms like Grayscale Investments, Companies have started observing the rise of optimism towards crypto by institutional investors. Look, you have 73% institutional investors. 
you know, as opposed to, you know, look at these smaller amounts. Trailing 12 months, you have 7% accredited investors, 18% retired accounts, and 2% family offices, okay? Also, like I said yesterday, I don't know how many of you actually stayed to the end of the video. That's why it's important that you stay to the end of the video because I do talk about more than just the charts in the beginning. You can see right here, Larry Cermak pointed out, interestingly, according to Coinbase's data, 67% with the largest Bitcoin holdings, the top 10% are buying rather than selling in the last 24 hours. You can see right here, about 67% of them were buying. And that was when Bitcoin was dumping during that dead cat bounce that we spoke about yesterday, which I mean, technically, I guess if we continue to go up, then it's not a dead cat bounce, but it did have a little bit of a pullback. So, you know, we were a little careful yesterday, right? And also look at this, business is booming for Bitcoin peer-to-peer -peer exchange Paxful, thanks in larger part to the onboarding of Here's the magic word, guys. Institutional clients, okay, to its platform, according to Paxful CEO Ray Youssef. So he says, without naming names, uh, smaller entrepreneurial financial institutions were responsible for 70% of the surges in bank transfers on Paxful's platform in July. In fact, between June and July, bank transfers on Paxful's jumped from about 4 million to about 7 million in volume, according to a report from the company. But guys, here's the situation right here. Bitcoin and avocado correlation is finally dead, so that's it, sell everything. Just kidding, but I mean, yeah, actually, have you, you guys have seen this chart, right? It was pretty crazy, the avocado Bitcoin chart. Okay, we're just having fun. Stop taking life so seriously all the time. But speaking about what's happening right here for my friends trading on Binance, the dedicated US arm of cryptocurrency exchange Binance is gonna go live by November, according to CZ. However, in the interview, CZ said that the US exchange will not initially operate in the state of New York, which sets a high bar for crypto firms applying for its bit license. And they say that currently they are not looking into applying for the bit license. So my friends in New York, we're gonna have to just get used to seeing this again. I've actually gotten pretty used to seeing this to be completely honest with you at this point. That being said, from other exchange news, we have a ton of delistings over at Poloniex. Now these are just uh, exchange pairs that are being removed. You can see there are 23 trading pairs. This does not mean that the actual assets themselves are being removed, just that these pairs are. And you can see down here, no more LTC XMR sadness, fluffy pony. That's from Charlie Lee. So moving on, talking about something positive, because I don't want to just talk about doom and gloom. We could talk about Huobi's Prime. They recently had Emoji Network come out. Now, this is pretty interesting. So this is this is already done with, by the way. It happened. So okay, if you're trying to get into it, it's over. But micro tra uh, microtransactions, including tipping on social networks, are among some of the use cases envisioned by Emoji Networks. Guys, the token is called LOL. You can't make this stuff up. It operates on its own native blockchain, which is interesting. So it didn't use Ethereum. It's able to actually keep costs down. Um, also, it's a proof of stake algorithm coupled with a staking model supported by 6 million users across Emoji's Berminal and Burmy apps. So this ensures that the network is sufficiently distributed. This setup also gives token holders an incentive to earn through staking tokens within uh, their mobile app, right? So here's the interesting th thing. The team includes two co-founders of IOST. I've actually heard a lot lot of people pretty excited about that project recently. They're a high-speed blockchain network built around scalability. So the Emoji Network can be thought of as the P2P or B2C version of IOST. So essentially, despite its core team hailing from China, Emoji Network has seen 70% of its existing users actually coming from Latin America, where social media adoption is high and viral products spread rapidly. So the fact that you can actually earn LOL tokens for creating content is generally what uh, I would say is creating uh, the flocking to this essentially. You can see Burmy enables users to earn LOL for referring friends, completing challenges and checking in daily. So I should probably check this out because uh, this is something interesting. You know, I'm always looking for these different types of apps, you know, these different types of social networks and stuff like that. So for crypto networks to see real world adoption, fancy tech alone won't be enough. I do agree. There needs to be a compelling value proposition for users to switch from the apps and social networks that they're used to. And you can see right here, uh, Emoji Network, it is down 7% today, but it is up about 200% ROI. So congratulations to anybody that was able to get into that. 
Also, Andreas Antonopoulos, even though he has not come out and directly said it, it does. Uh, they do say that they think he's coming out with a new book called Mastering Lightning because uh, it says there's no official announcement, but an observant Reddit user made a post on our Bitcoin about Mastering Lightning repository on GitHub. We also have lots of news today. Coinbase has acquired the institutional business of Zappo, a cryptocurrency wallet provider. The deal will allow Coinbase to expand the capabilities of its custodial business business while simultaneously increasing its assets over seven billion dollars so the purchase cost the exchange 55 million zapo has already decided to transfer its cryptocurrency assets to coinbase as a result the platform will store more than uh 514,000 bitcoin for zapo customers um, now this is the interesting part according to fortune media the deal could result in Coinbase storing over 5% of all Bitcoins in circulation. We know Grayscale already has over 1%, so pretty interesting moving forward, guys. And also, just ending on some positive news, our good old buddy, Tom Lee, the perma bull, when asked directly whether Bitcoin is a genuine safe haven during an interview on the Fox Business Channel, he says, yes, you can see it in markets where there's turmoil. The local Bitcoin prices tend to surge. I'm sure he's talking about Argentina and Venezuela and things of that nature. So he says, because people are trying to find ways to protect their money. According to him, he says, Bitcoin is just resting. He says, I think it's going to be much higher by the end of the year and potentially at an all time high. I think anyone who wants to have a 2% or 1% allocation into Bitcoin as a hedge, I think that that is a smart bet. And finally, guys, trading that Jim Wyckoff, who has been involved in markets for over 30 years, believes that even though Bitcoin is falling, this is not a bearish signal for the crypto king. In fact, he says, why, uh, he suggests that the continuous sideways trading of Bitcoin futures is simply a sign that bulls need to take a rest before another price rally. He still believes that the bulls have a technical advantage over the bears as both camps are currently playing a tug of war. And on that note, let's get on out of here, guys. It is Friday. What is Bitcoin doing? Let's give this a refresh. Bitcoin is... Still up 0.83%, still hanging around that line. We will take it. Thank you so much for everyone who's been liking, subscribing, and commenting. You guys rock. Also, any comment on any video throughout the course of the week makes you eligible for the random Ledger Nano S drawing that we do on Mondays. That's it for me today, guys. If you want to have fun and join the Telegram group, it's absolutely free. Also, once again, shout out to everyone who's been supporting the channel by using the referral links below.